Some of our students are joining us just because they're very curious, and uh, so that part will be a little bit more like an organic conversation. So they'll ask their own question instead of being channeled through or something like that? Um, something like that. Like, we've prepared a list of interview yeah. questions that is project specific. Yeah. Um, and then some of the students aren't a part of the project, but are going to uh, be joining the conversation okay. in an organic kind of way. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Julia. Uh -huh. um, I'm vice principal at LBIS. And this is Chet Chester. So he teaches media elective as well as media PPL. And this is Nick. He teaches English um, as well mm -hmm. as music PPL. Um, oh. And these are our students. So maybe you guys can introduce yourself. Yeah. Right. So my name is Gino, and I I am I am the student that's here for the you know about organic conversation. And <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I'm currently studying in the in the DIS, but like a different program from what they are studying. Like I I am in a separate program. You're what? In a, in a separate. Uh, uh, in a program. separate program. Yeah. And, and what was it about? It's it's called honors program, and it's basically a bit more leaning towards like the uh conservative uh traditional way of education so like we read research papers and oh okay. Research. okay cool yeah. uh -huh. um hi my name is alice and i am also a student at mgis we will keep it here yeah it's got students um, <laughs> yeah uh i think i am very interested in music and media mm -hmm. and art so uh, this project is really it really interests me and yeah cool thank you yeah. Um, the project for this semester is related to music and media because our teacher is music and media teachers, and um, what we're doing is we're trying to open a thrift shop that also has elements on elements connected to music and media. So we have integrated like DJ elements into the thrift shop, and we're trying to. Um, open a business of our own that's like, um, yeah, just we're trying to create a business. And where would that be located? It's at work. Mar Marty Square, like Grandstand. Yeah, we're okay. doing it at Grandstand. It's called the 23 Music Shop. Okay. Music Room. The music Room, that's, that's where we've done it once, and then we've got one more coming up at the, on the 17th. Which cool. is uh -huh. this Sunday. Ne next, next, Sunday. Sunday. next Sunday. Next Sunday. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we've got around maybe two, one or two more before the semester ends. Uh -huh. So and for yeah, so for the first um, third shop, we earned like seven thousand. I remember. Yeah, we we got a decent amount of yeah, traffic decent, from the first yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You guys maybe want to talk about sort of the <coughs> goals of the project or what sort of. Well, the the the, the biggest the biggest thing we want to do is essentially help um, fast fashion, right? Like we know we know clothes are going around really quickly, going good like. You go to H and M or you go to Zara. There's tons of clothes and that's changing like every month, every week, mm -hmm. right? And we see that, and in, in we're trying to create a platform essentially for people to, to to trade or sell their their their, their clothes, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. essentially what we're doing. The method you guys are going with is right now is consignment, right? So someone will provide the items and then you yeah. sell it for um, however much, and then you keep a percentage and they keep. That was the first one. Like we, okay. we did that for the first one, and then right now we're just we're just taking in a entry fee for the spot, right? Because people were complaining about getting tax on you know from from us, and then we we thought that it would be, it would be like a better idea that's just get an entry fee, and then they can keep whatever they they make essentially. Okay. Yeah. And then you can add a little bit about sort of the high school for high school part about it. Yeah, oh, and we did some research, and like based on research, there's no high school thrift shops or like these shops targeted to high school consumers yet. So we wanted to open something that's like related to our age and our interests, and something mm -hmm. that we can connect like Taiwanese high school students all together as one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm Ray. Um, <laughs> I'm also in the project. Um, I'm more of a tech person mm -hmm. than than music and media. But then. It, it's it's people always like mandatory, so like I, I, I kind of just got placed in here, but I'm also I'm also interested in the thrift shop part of the class, the, the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So what element of the project are you working on specifically? It's a lot more management and getting getting things organized and planned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm Richard. I'm in a different PBL project, which is about uh, making like an art business. And um, oh yeah. 
This is our business card. Okay, wow. Pretty nice. Um, and what's it about? Uh, we're basically creating a business about art. So we, mm -hmm. we're going to find uh, partners to work with and then make them logos or posters or anything to do with art. Logos and posters? Yeah. Okay. They're a design company. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so, so like a, a company company? Um, oh, we we well, try to be. We're, oh. uh -huh. we're, we're, yeah, we're two different groups. Uh -huh. These guys are working with music and business. Yeah, we're totally different so. projects. Yeah, they mm -hmm. do the design, we do our own with their shots. Like and you guys have been cross uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but the two of you are in the same project. No, no, no. So, so you write papers. I read papers, I sell stuff, and this is fun. I, I'm sure I can write a paper about how they sell stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> something like that. Okay, uh, so how should we structure our conversation? We got a few questions, we want to start like with that. Right. Um, first question is, what are some of the most effective advertising campaigns that you've worked on, and mm -hmm. what what are some consistencies that you f you found through the campaigns? Right. Because we're trying to promote the thrift shop, we want to know what's like the best way to do it, like the most effective mm -hmm. way to do it. When you mm -hmm. say effective, what do you mean? Like, how do we get people to come essentially? Like, how do we get people to know about us, be interested in us, and then you know either join or come to the thrift shop? So you're interested in actually converting that into a physical visit instead of uh, an abstract idea or something. Yeah. So it, it's not really advertising for a cause, it's advertising for a place. Not necessarily a place, but like mm -hmm. the brand, right? The, a brand. Because we're not going to be doing that 23 every single time. It's mm -hmm. going to be, it's like, it's going to be changing, but then it's going to be us that's help, that's, that, that's doing it, right? Like, Maybe you can talk a little bit too about sort of like our, what we, the experience we've had and sort of the experience that we're, we're hoping for. You know what I mean? Like what was our... Right, so we started with like students from our, from our, from our yeah. class, right? And then mm -hmm. we now expanded to our, our friend zones, right? Like, mm -hmm. we've reached out to our friends, like, are you interested to, to join? And we've got, we got a few responses, right? And we want to know how to... But like, to join, uh, what, what does it mean? What's so your like call to action? People are coming in to sell stuff, right? Yeah? Yeah, and... Sure. So when people... like okay. the first thrift shop we cool, did. Cool. Yeah, there were a lot, quite a bit of foot traffic and then like um, these are the pictures we also put like DJ in our thrift uh -huh. shop and like we kind of um, placed the whole vibe like right. I think what made us unique was the vibe and like how we're targeting to like high school students mm -hmm. rather than like the general public. Yeah. Oh, so you've got a very specific Yeah, audience. like mm -hmm. a specific niche. Yeah, and what we found was there, there really wasn't a place for, for teenagers to go on, on weekends, right? Like uh -huh. you look around like where do you go on weekends? It's so either movies, yeah. we go to nice restaurants, and that was really about it. And yeah. It wasn't like, well maybe concerts, but like it's, it's pretty rare. Like, uh -huh. And then what we found was, okay, let's how, about, how about we create a space for people to chill, right? Because we, we, we don't find good spaces to chill, why don't we create one? And then now we, we, we have people in our friend zone that, that, are, that are joining, that they're coming in to sell clothes, they come to checking it out. How do we go on from there? Like, mm -hmm. How do we get more people to, to come and join us in, in mm -hmm. selling stuff or like in, in recycling um, second-hand um, items. Like as I understand it, the purpose, the objective of the project is to um, Raise awareness. spread yeah. awareness, increase awareness for sustainability and sustainable mm -hmm. practices as well as how do you exercise the things that, you know, the creative kind of pastime that one might have in music or producing or DJing or bringing people together for good. Um, and how do you provide a platform for peoples that maybe don't have a space um, to come together and form a community, right? Because the first one was mainly focused on clothing, mm -hmm. but then we've actually got artists, like high school artists that's, will that's willing to, to sell their drawings or like dis dis at least display their drawings. Like it's a place for them to show off their work, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with DJs, the same thing with the the artwork, it's a place for people to show to show off what they've done, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And we, we don't, we, we have not seen that, like like a platform like that. Okay, and, and the brand thing you chose is what? what? What's the name for this idea? Um, Our name is called the Strawberry Frog <laughs> Thrift Shop. But the, the we, what? Strawberry Frog <laughs> okay. Tommy Ting Wa. A Tommy Ting Wa. And the reason why I wanted to go with this name is because I think Strawberry Frog is a really um, artsy, cute, unique name that's like, 
interesting to look into, I guess. It was like a di- how it was it it, it, was, it it really just started out with with one of our uh, 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 like it's it's really hard to 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 find a name, right? It's like you're going to be stuck at finding a name for ages and we thought like okay. Anyway, I got ideas and then strawberry frog just popped up and it sounded nice and yeah, that's how that's nice. really how we got cool it. To us, so uh-huh. We went with that name. But it, it's uh, already a name for an advertising and marketing agency. Uh, so are, are you strawberry frog? Right? Yeah, strawberry right. frog. Right. So so it's it's got a Wikipedia entry. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so so are, are, I mean, are you connected? We're not connected. They're in Sao Paulo <laughs> and New York and Amsterdam. <laughs> it is, it is <laughs> we're strawberry frogs. Yeah, we're oh, strawberry okay, frogs. Okay, okay, more than one. Shop. Like, we also okay. have thrift more than shop. One. Strawberry frogs is a thrift shop. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I ask because, um, like, uh, people would do what I do now, right? They hear a word, a hashtag or something, and they, they will Google it or they will uh, search on Twitter or Instagram uh, on the hashtag. Now, uh, if you have something like, um, I don't know, Taiwan can help, uh, it's very hard to misspell that. Uh, and, and it's, I mean, I printed on name cards and everything. <laughs> and so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's very unique, uh, but we don't claim patent or anything on it, so everybody is free uh, to use it. Uh, and so it catches on, become viral, uh, and it uh, has a kind of potential, right? Uh, initially, it's only used on WHO, WHA related campaigns like the Taiwan Health in the World Health uh, Assembly, but we found that it could work on any of those SDG items so that on um, my name card we connect the 17 colors with uh, Taiwan can help. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's, it's quite effective. Now, uh, if um, we need to, um, you know, uh, spell it strawberry frog, it's a frogs, right? <laughs> it, it loses the, 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 the same kind of potential uh, that uh, allows for the viral uh, advertisement or viral marketing. Uh, to, to, to come. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not so sure about the, the plural <laughs> strawberry frogs. Uh, it's kind of hard to remember. What's the, what's the hashtag that we have? We're using uh, strong frog shit. Yeah, yeah. Strong frog berry, that was berry. our hashtag <laughs> from our, our Very team. froggy. Yeah. Okay, that's slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what makes a good hashtag? Well, like you can't unsee it, mm-hmm. right? It, it combines uh, like previously unconnected ideas in such a way that sounds natural afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so Taiwan can help is like that. Um, ice bucket challenge. Right? Uh, so, right. No, nobody before the campaign connected ice bucket with challenge. <laughs> but once it's connected, um, actually challenge become a, a genre. Uh, everybody now starts challenge for this, challenge for that. So it was like, super uh, effective. Now. Very farky. Well, I think they, in some ways they, they, they nailed the criteria, right? Because like, nobody thought that strawberry can go along with frogs. Except for a certain Amsterdam designer. More research. But yeah, I think that's interesting, sort of the idea of like the creating something viral, that sort of the ice bucket challenge, like going that route. Mm-hmm. Of, of trying to yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that they've already trademarked uh, Strawberry Frog, uh, <laughs> and, but not in Taiwan, <laughs> but, but still, uh, it's going to be a, a challenge uh, for it to, to communicate using that hashtag, and I don't think plural is the solution. <laughs> but, but Berry Froggy, I can see that. Uh, I think Berry Froggy is, is more natural. Need to berry froggy. <laughs> and even if we just take out the berry from strawberry fro- frog thrift shop, we can just take, we can just go with straw frog thrift. Like, it, it might not sound <laughs> as, but then it, it could it's be a straw frog argument. Okay. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> how, how would you suggest this mm-hmm. if we want to rebrand ourselves, right? Like, is it is it too late to rebrand ourselves? Or like, what do you think we should do? I, I, I think forward? berry froggy uh, is more catchy berry than, froggy. Than, than, than straw frogs. Uh, for, for, first, Froggy doesn't have a plural form, so we can't misspell it. Uh, and nobody used that yeah. yet, right? Uh, I mean, there's a Twitter account with that name, but <laughs> 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 but, but that person hasn't been posting uh, very um, relevant uh, to your course uh, materials. Uh, and um, um, the follower account is 
26. So I, I think you'll, you'll, you'll survive. Uh, not, not like it's going to be trade market or anything soon. So, so I, I do recommend uh, bear market, but, but you need to find, uh, in addition to this very vivid picture, right? You can't uh, unsee bear market. Um, some some uh, connection from that uh, to whatever call to action you're doing. Uh, people are going to ask, you know, why am I going to, to join uh, with uh, the thrift shop um, setting? Um, what, 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 how is it related to, to berries? How is it related to frogs? And you've got to have a story that you can explain in, you know, uh, 280 characters mm -hmm. um, uh, on that. So, so it's a kind of branding setting uh, move. So, so why that? Why did you come with this? So maybe, I think, you know, we came up with it somewhat randomly, uh -huh. but we could go from random to meaning, right? So yeah, like, yeah, you can retronym it, right? <laughs> Retroactively find a cause. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the, I think one of the things to, uh, with our, our school and the way that our program works is we have like four and a half months to try to create a project that, you know, has some meaning to the students and isn't sort of something that just sort of disappears right away afterwards. Yeah. So the students sort of came up with this idea of the thrift shop and of secondhand clothes. And so I think we're still maybe searching for that specific sort of underlying message or that underlying meaning. But it doesn't mean we necessarily have to, uh, we, we still can find that. I think sometimes even connecting to things like strawberry and frogs, and our, at least in our class, in the, in, the, in the culture of the class, it's sort of uplifted the students and like, oh, it's become this sort of meme within for us. Um, so I wonder if we could, yeah, mm -hmm, trying mm -hmm. to find some sort of purpose could be interesting there. Yeah, there's all sorts of berries too, not just strawberry. Uh, <laughs> right. right. Okay, so, so, so that's that. Uh, I think uh, find a hashtag, uh, have the uh, syllables um, preferably rhyme, uh, which is great because uh, the new one actually rhymes, uh, and uh, uh, come up with a retroactive story <laughs> that connects the, the, the two ideas into whatever your cause is, uh, and that will make a, a seed of a pretty viral campaign. Mm -hmm. Hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Um. For the next question, because we're like uh, opening up, like we want to open this business. Um, so, if we are interested in getting like government funding mm -hmm. for our project, mm -hmm. what are like the first steps to think about mm -hmm. when applying grants, and what is mm -hmm. the government looking for? Sure. Uh, so, if you simply search for Xin Chuang Yuan Meng Wang, or uh, I believe the keyword to use uh, is. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you've probably already got it, yeah. right? So, so um, you will see uh, pretty much everything uh, that there is uh, for the startups uh, to get government funding. Um, and you can uh, choose between uh, whether you're in ideation stage, which I believe you're in right now, uh, the bootstrapping stage, uh, or in the later uh, funding stages, uh, and uh, it will connect you to various uh, funding sources. Uh, so that's uh, like if you're in it for, uh, for a purpose that's aligned uh, with a certain government um, institute, uh, then they will consider their purpose and how they align uh, with yours. Um, and so that's the, the first thing. Uh, now, uh, we also have another uh, resource, uh, which is the Social Innovation Taiwan, uh, the kind of reason for this lab to, to exist. Um, it's at si.taiwan.gov.tw, uh, and if you search for si uh, space Taiwan, you'll find it. Um, and uh, it's got an English website too, uh, and if you go to the first menu, that's information and then government resources. Uh, they list uh, not just grants, uh, but um, kind of in-kind contributions, mentorships, like non-financial uh, uh, resources uh, as well, uh, provided by pretty much all the different uh, ministries. Um, and all of them um, have a kind of dedicated window uh, so that you can actually call or email uh, that person uh, to ask, to, to pitch your idea essentially, uh, and then uh, just take it from there. So, so don't think that 
if you're a company, don't think that only the Ministry of uh, Economy Affairs uh, is the one making grants. Actually, there's roughly a dozen or so uh, ministries and commissions uh, making grants uh, if you're a company. Now, if you choose a association uh, or a uh, co-op or something, uh, you have access to some extra resources uh, as well, but you do not have the access to impact investors uh, if you do fund uh, handout shares. So that's a balancing choice. Right. Um, this is well. This the. Let's go on to the Just fast fashion. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we believe that fast fashion is harmful and not sustainable, right? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you skip the sex education. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or, or like, do you have any mm -hmm. um, in perspective or like insight? Should I say it sure. like this? Sure. On on about Taiwan's current sex education. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just had a really nice uh, interview with me as the host uh, with the uh, Xiao Hong Ma. Uh, they used to call themselves Little Red Hood, uh, but now they call themselves With Red, uh, which is, um, I think, easier to remember, fewer syllables. Um, and uh, the, the With Red people uh, specialize uh, in period uh, education and getting the communication out about uh, period poverty, uh, period equity, and things like that. And they very successfully Recently, you've seen that the uh, Taipei uh, vice mayor, I believe, Huang Shenshen, uh, endorsing uh, eliminating period poverty as uh, one of her um, agenda. Uh, and uh, we've also seen like very successful convincing uh, in the municipalities and townships uh, based on this like uh, why not uh, philosophy, right? Why not uh, include uh, temples and so on uh, in the restaurants uh, as free resources, why not, and so on. Um, so uh, I do believe uh, that uh, by founding as a association rather than a company, uh, by working uh, with the temple makers and so on uh, as partners uh, instead of, um, you know, as a supply chain uh, members and so on, uh, they are in uh, a what we call a social entrepreneurship space uh, where their main uh, call to action is social, like asking people who buy uh, pads uh, with an ex um, excess, uh, like uh, buy one, get one free, buy don't need one right now, uh, to uh, just donate it uh, to, to their class and so on. And that sparkles uh, conversations. And then they can train the trainers, uh, make the teachers uh, aware of how to start a conversation around this, and then uh, make sure that uh, even universities and so on start offering courses uh, around sex education. But it's a, a very soft approach. This is not a, a very hard advocacy. They mainly just say, you know, why not be more inclusive? Uh, so I would recommend uh, you to look into uh, that particular social uh, entrepreneurship. Um, they just won the Diana Award or something. Uh, they, I think they've got something right uh, on the topic of sex education. A lot of these sex education is sort of focused on, you know, kids at schools, right? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the older generations are missing that? Right, maybe parents? Mm -hmm. Oh, right, because they're still having sex, right? So, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, uh, yes and no. Uh, I mean, we, we've seen a lot of resources also dedicated, like in community colleges uh, and in the uh, health and welfare outreach centers and even uh, for the elderly. Um, I think With Red has this um, outreach campaign where they interview grandmas about their stories. Um, and so on. So I think this is a, a all uh, age um, um, conversation. Uh, but but I, I do think um, we we need to make it more like cultural uh, bound, cultural themed. Like be more sensitive uh, about the coaches uh, because the, the adults um, they don't really like to be reindoctrinated <laughs> by, by anything. It, it has to be something that they uh, proactively contribute uh, that makes a sense in their community. Which means that you need to be sensitive to whatever culture uh, they they are in. Um, so so that's that. Fast fashion? Fast fashion? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, sorry. Sure. Um, so we believe fast fashion is harmful and not mm -hmm. sustainable. Um, like it, it, this was sort of related to the first question. It's more about how do we get the word out. Like, with, like it's a trouble to get the word out after like all your friends knowing about it. Well, it's not sustainable, of course. Uh, how is it harmful? Well, isn't it harmful? What's the harm? Like environmental, environmental aspects, no? Yes. Okay. Um, like like uh, concretely, uh, what, what's your, your pitch? 
Wait, so what, what kind of harm does it reduce? It, fast fashion is harmful because it, um, the materials they use, I remember. It was and then the, there was, there's yeah. all the toilet labor in, involved then, in making the, make the, the creation and of this a lot of um, clothes are dumped to Africa and all like the, the place in Africa is uh, polluted because of these um, clothing, fast fashion. So we think fast fashion is becoming a more serious problem because of all of these uh, pollution and like environmental harm that it's ca causing. Okay, so you're, you're focusing on like toxins, uh, greenhouse gases, you know, these uh, like externalities as we say. Okay, the, because there's also people who uh, focus on the human rights, the, uh, yeah, the child labor, the uh, labor. Right, or, or specifically about water or deforestation and so on. So when, when I ask uh, what kind of harm, it's not rhetorical because you, you, you can't really you know, go and say, oh, it has you know, 70 different harms. <laughs> people are not going to remember that. So you, you've got to focus. Uh, and I, what I've heard is that you're going to focus on you know, toxins and maybe greenhouse gases. Is that the idea? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, then then if you're going there, um, I think you're you're in very good company because um, if anything, uh, the Taiwanese people are uh, very scared when it comes to food safety uh, and toxins, um, and uh, well, slightly more rational nowadays. <laughs> but but that remains to be the number one topic. When 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 you ask people, random people on the street, um, researchers actually did that. Uh, like, what's the kind of number one uh, thing that you feel is dangerous? I think they did it a couple of years back uh, before the pandemic, uh, and and they're they're like, of course, toxins. <laughs> so, so so that's a that's a good angle uh, and connects to food safety and. The entire ecosystem uh, safety. Um, the greenhouse gases um, requires more mass. Uh, it requires more more work. You have to actually do a uh, carbon um, impact assessment uh, of everything. But uh, this year, of course, is all the rage with the net zero uh, movement. So it's good as a subtopic, but it will require more research uh, from you. So yeah, I think it's a it's a good angle, and uh, I would encourage you to simply. Um, you know, in, instead of uh, saying that it has all kinds of harms and it's not sustainable, uh, focus on like one or two specific harm. Uh, it could be anecdote, it could be research, uh, but uh, make it like palpable. Yeah. With, I, I believe that you've 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 done thrift shops or like secondhand shops mm -hmm. in 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 but like it, you've done that before and mm -hmm. what's yeah, What's I, I did that. that. Like, uh -huh. and but but it's it's C two C auction. <laughs> it's not a physical shop, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, the the company that I helped co-found uh, back in nineteen ninety six or something uh, did work on uh, Taiwan's first C two C auction website. Uh, so it's a little bit like eBay. The name was Coolbid, uh, and uh, the reason why uh, was not sustainability at all, <laughs> but, but rather uh, at the time people are very interested uh, in the uh, possibility uh, on the websites so that people can kind of uh, express themselves. It's on the very early days. It's like the NFTs nowadays, but websites. <laughs> and so, uh, so what better uh, way to show one's um, kind of taste and expression uh, than well, opening a virtual thrift shop? Uh, on the web, so that was one of the, the earlier ideas. It's all about self-expression and not that much about sustainability, uh, which is why it's called Cool Bit, right? it's about being cool. Uh, anyway, so, so that's my uh, experience, but it's woefully dated, it's many, many years ago. Yeah. Um, so what kind of harm is What are some of the important questions you would try to answer in order for a business to grow? Like, how would you let a business grow so that more and more people would, would um, know about the business and would want to support the business? Yeah, but, but why is the business there uh, in the first place? That, that you need to ask first. So it's more about looking at like the Like, what problem, problems problem. does it solve? 
uh, or uh, what positive impact uh, does it provide to the society or environment. Right? So, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be solving anything. Uh, one can be like purely creative. Uh, but one need to kind of justify uh, the time that your uh, customers and uh, your fellow citizens spend uh, on your business as worthwhile. And, and to do that, uh, you need to generate meaning. Uh, and to generate meaning, you need to uh, let them see that their actions are being impactful. Uh, and not in a bad way, right? So they could be like bad, impactful. Um, so uh, avoiding harm is a very good first step. Uh, if you say, you know, if your business as usual is causing harm, uh, then of course you, you should do like uh, the business in a better way. That's that's one way to do it. Or uh, if you're not uh, actually solving anything, but just providing a for expression, at least you can say uh, it doesn't cause external harm. It also uh, helps you to, or the community, uh, to be better in some space specific way. So that's the question uh, to, to answer. It's what's your positive impact? I think what, you know, when we sort of started this project, I think where we're kind of stuck is we wanted to create a space, kind of like we were talking about before, sort of like for high school students to come together. Mm -hmm. That wasn't necessarily about, you know, just going to the movies or going to a restaurant, especially just maybe sort of avoid the sort of drinking mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. that's, that's prevalent too. Mm -hmm. um, I think throughout this we've sort of gotten lost on the way. We sort of Oh, is it really changed a few different times? Is it important to try to get influencers to join? Is it important to make money? How much is sustainability a problem? So I think we're sort of lost in this. What does success mean? What does to success us? mean to yeah. us? And, and usually, uh, one uh, sure way to reorient it yourself is to ask your still loyal, uh, like partners and uh, stakeholders, customers, and, and say, you know, why do you still choose to spend your time with us? Mm. Uh, like, like what, why do you choose us? Uh, and, and maybe the answer will surprise you. Uh, you never know. How important do you think it, uh, a, a, a good motive is? Like, or like good causes when we're trying to pitch this idea to, to maybe partners be like, uh -huh. it's either we go to them and be like, okay, we're doing this eco-friendly thing, or we go to them and be like, we're doing a business, you can earn money. Like, what's, uh -huh. what's different then? What, what, what's yeah, the, the thing is that they can earn money anywhere. Right, there, there are uh, no shortage of online C2C auction sites. So, <laughs> so uh, they, it, it costs them like literally nothing nowadays uh, yeah. to, to start a, a online thrift shop, right? So, uh, so going with the physical route means um, dedication. It means extra time spent. Uh, and, and then for what? Right, so, so you, you have to answer this and then for what? But it doesn't need to be you, it could be uh, the people themselves uh, creating a culture, right, a vibe, uh, and uh, trying to make the vibe um, uh, communicable, right? Uh, start, um, well, new hashtags is one, but uh, anyway, uh, that one can help to, to identify that vibe with something positive uh, in their lives. Uh, and then, uh, of course, they will have to generate some sort of income, but what's important is that they are now in it and they can co-create um, new models. Uh, so you don't have to do all the business development yourselves. Uh, and people who identify with the buy, with the cause, can then uh, do business developments with you. Uh, so uh, try to think with your customers, not for your customers. Uh, that, that's the main idea. It's super helpful. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, they're not going to refer other people in. Yeah. Uh, and if you are in the bootstrapping phase, that's, that's what you need. Because people don't stay in the same hobby forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, like what you were saying, like, we, like we've done progress in the past and they kind of stay there. Uh -huh. Or it was something that, the school project, right? You yeah. do it, afterwards it's gone. Mm -hmm. You want something else uh -huh. next term, right? Like, it's how do we define success? for a project and how, and how do we make it live on essentially, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's like you don't want to be spending half a year of your time at something that's not going to live. Uh -huh. right. Well, I think the Ministry of Education Youth Development Administration uh, prides itself in turning student projects, just student projects, uh, into sustainable companies. Uh, I think more than half of the youth start uh, funded companies actually live on to be very sustainable. 
So, so there's nothing inherent about a student project that doesn't survive uh, the, the, the project itself. Uh, but of course, the, the UStart uh, ecosystem is, is quite unique uh, in that they have a very large network of uh, entrepreneurs that started their first startup during uh, their school, yes. Uh, and, and so the kind of mentors um, know exactly what they're talking about. Uh, and, and they, uh, frankly speaking, uh, if you have a startup idea and then you're a high school or a university student, you can pivot infinite times. The, the, uh, the society is going to be very tolerant uh, in, in whatever pivoting uh, you're doing. Uh, and even if you don't meet any of the bottom lines about the social, environmental, and financial bottom lines, you can write a paper about it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a no-lose situation <laughs> when you're in school. Um, and, and so uh, I would encourage you to uh, not necessarily uh, apply for U-Start, but uh, look at the new Start network. Uh, and look at how they structure uh, their uh, incubation uh, periods and so on, so that uh, you can see whatever project you're doing as something that's like a seed uh, to the future pivots uh, that you may try out uh, a couple years down the line. Uh, so, so build a human network is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think this is super helpful. I'm just thinking of, of, the, of the members who aren't here today, would they have asked anything? Yeah, channeling. <laughs> the spirit. No one would have <laughs> They would have told you happy birthday. Uh, okay. Early happy birthday. Oh, wow, okay, cool. Um, we, we still have some time for free chats. Yeah, there was something you wanted to talk ah, about. Yes, <laughs> yes. time for the organic chat. <laughs> <laughs> that was the industrial farming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay, a bit of an introduction to myself. So, um, the field that I am interested in is, I actually have all of the things. I, I'm interested in finance and politics, and I'm currently doing a study on morals. Yeah, all over the place. And, like, I, 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 when, when reading, like, the, the, the projects that you worked on, like, uh, G, GOV. Like, Dev Zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah. G, like, Zero. Something, something like that. I, I noticed that you, you've been, working a lot on projects that brings uh, citizens closer to politics, right? Uh -huh. But, like, uh, I, I re recently I, I saw, I, as I saw it through like, uh, research on, you know, uh, on politics and stuff, I've noticed that uh, throughout the history, the, there, 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 there are, you know, there are in the, uh, always consequences of like, getting too much people involved in politics such as uh, populism and, uh, and I thought you were going to say such as democracy, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not expressing my opinion here. But <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, something, something such like as that. populism. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. but so uh -huh. like, uh, let, let's say like, what, what, what is your ideal structure of a mm -hmm. uh, of a society? But what's wrong structure? with populism? Uh, well, uh, I, I I think uh, politics should be based on rationality and not and why, and, what and why is that? Uh, rationality makes the best judge, make, makes yeah. the best approach of judgment. For individuals, certainly. Individual. Yeah. yeah. But why for a group? Why for a group, huh? And doesn't, I'm not arguing doesn't, doesn't, uh, for an individual level. Doesn't uh -huh. a group of individual, um, individual go, uh, like, uh, you know, equals to a, a, a group, a, a group, like, end goal? I'm sorry? Doesn't a like a group of individual goals then then become like a a, a, a group's like you know uh, collective goal? Common goal. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. If they share a common purpose, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and populism is one way to unite them into a common purpose. Yeah, but like it's 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 not always the most rational. Yeah, rational of course it's way. irrational. But yeah. but why why is it not good in your uh, opinion? I, I'm not challenging you. I'm I, just I, I, trying to understand. When looking at past examples. Uh -huh. Populism, right, uh -huh. leads to uh, it, it leads to extreme extreme uh, consequences, yeah, such as Nazi, uh -huh. right, right, violence, violence. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if there is some sort of non-violent uh, populism, would that work for me? Would that work for me? Huh? Uh -huh. Because mm -hmm. we're talking about trending hashtags. That's yeah. one kind of non-violent uh, populism. <laughs> Mm, I think it, 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 it still depends on like the assessment of 
of like our consequences and benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, what the, the point I'm trying to make uh, is that populism is dangerous because it could be violent to the excluded. Yeah. Right. So if someone is casted as an outsider by the populist uh, ideology, mm -hmm. then of course it gives reason to, to harm them as non-humans and so on, as mm -hmm. Nazis in the name of denazification. Anyway, so, <laughs> so that's, that's the, the, the danger. But um, the, the point I'm making is that uh, by getting uh, the politics more accessible, it doesn't necessarily uh, lead to casting other people as enemies or others. It could also be that uh, it makes people more understanding, uh, more, uh, builds more empathy uh, yeah. with each other. Uh, and one really good example we've had is that um, the, the mask uh, thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a trending hashtag, <laughs> right? It is a trend. Uh, people, I think, uh, as early as fe uh, April 2020, um, all the uh, popular brands turned their uh, logos pink uh, to celebrate a pink Mm -hmm. mask episode uh, and then uh, they they later on would turn them rainbow or things like that so so it must become a self-expression item it, it gained popularity not because uh, the government mandated a rational mm -hmm. choice because a medical brain mask reduced the R value of the coronavirus uh, but because it is something cool uh, something mm -hmm. people wear to to express themselves and build come on purpose yeah but masks are probably the most nonviolent technology there is <laughs> I can't imagine the violent sure. use of masks <laughs> ask Americans they will say different I know I know <laughs> but but that, but the point I'm making is just because um, in in America in the beginning of the coronavirus, uh, they were trying to say that wear a mask to show respect uh, to the elderly, uh, to show respect to the medical professionals, and so on. And if someone you know is of the countercultural sort, uh, or or if they don't live with elders, and so on, that they means nothing uh, to them. Uh, but in Taiwan, when we say oh wear a mask to protect your own face against your own, I watch that. Uh, wear a mask to express yourself, to, to be cool, uh, to uh, show your aesthetics or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it catches on, and it's a sort of populism, uh, but it's uh, thoroughly non-violent, is yeah. the point I'm making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And another, another, like, uh, another question I've been having is like, should we really, should, like, should, should, there, should everyone really be able to, like, to have the right to, to be involved in pol political decision making? Let's say, uh, 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 let's who, who are you excluding? What? And who are you intending to exclude? <laughs> <laughs> let's say, okay, let's say, let's put it this way. Shall we, shall we trust, pe trust people, let's say, that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily know what is best for the nation to, uh -huh. to, to do, to make the decision of, of the other of nation's future? Well, if they're uh, unwilling to learn, then of course uh, that's one very good reason uh, to exclude people yeah. who are stubbornly uh, re refusing uh, mm -hmm. to learn. Yeah, that's that, that's yeah. why I'm, like, I'm I'm pretty against like you know uh, mm -hmm. e equal equal decision rights mm -hmm. basically, uh, I, I I believe that there are some sort of people that the, that that doesn't know what's uh, what what's is going on, what their yeah. goal is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and. Uh, probably, the, if they do, they they probably pick short term over over long term. Uh -huh. But that's uh, that will that will be healthy for the uh -huh. like nation on the on the long run. And right. do you think it's a it's a uh, like incurable condition? Uh, do you think they stay like that for life? I'm not certain about that, but uh -huh. I I I'm sh I, but well, what I'm trying to say that that concept could be dangerous. Like combining. Uh -huh what we say, populism, right? Uh, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I mean, if they're medically, clinically non-conscious, um, then, of course, uh, I can see a reason of saying they shouldn't be able to vote. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, of course, uh, you know, uh, modern research shows that there is an off chance that they become you know, conscious again. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in outside of those, like, uh, like frankly speaking, edge cases, um, most people are uh, enjoying what we call neuroplasticity, uh, meaning that they're, they're able to form uh, long-term thinking uh, potentials, so, mm -hmm. which is why education is not limited for people under 18, right? <laughs> which is why we do lifelong uh, education. And 
political participation, especially on the community level, uh, where they can't really uh, influence national decisions, uh, like Xie Chu Guan Wei Hui, right? The, the communities uh, that try to make a, a certain apartment building, um, you know, the decisions on, you know, whether to collect the garbage on 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. or something like that, right? But, but if you do not give them that chance, uh, there is no chance for them to learn uh, to uh, think holistically. Uh, thinking long term, rational thinking, decision making is the one. So, which is why uh, the first question I ask is that uh, are there specific sorts of people you think are, there's just no hope <laughs> that, that they will be able to, to function in the community, even given the chance uh, to learn? And it is a, it's a, a really deep question, and I don't have a perfect answer on that. But at this particular moment, I, I'm willing to believe that really only people who are clinically you know, diagnosed as, you know, not being able to be conscious ever, uh, then, then maybe we can think about, uh, you know, taking away the voting rights. But even that, the medical science may be wrong. Uh, yeah. Oh, can I? Oh. And sure, sure. How scared are you uh, mm -hmm. about the algorithm and data, right? Uh -huh. um, it's, it's really, really on the table where, where, where how data is being gathered and uh -huh. there might be a day where algorithm knows us better than we know ourselves. Really? And when would that be? I, like, it's, it's a hypothesis, right? Like, uh -huh. what if one day Google will be able to know us better than ourselves based on the, the data that, that they have, right? If you uh -huh. look at the biomet biometric data, if you look at the, the routine that we go through and the, uh -huh. the, the Google searches, the, the emails that, that they have, right? Like, they will essentially know everything about us. Uh -huh. And except I thought, I thought e except what we're going to do. More or less. More or less. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's uh -huh. just going to advance. And uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, I mean, um, up until you're maybe four years old, your parents probably know you better uh, than you do yourself. Uh, and that's a fact. <laughs> right? uh, and, and, but but we, we eventually uh, grew out of it. Right? But so then when, uh, they know better, when, when they know us better than we know ourselves, we will start consulting them on, on, on things, right? Like, we we talk to a teacher, for example, mm -hmm. or a professor, because they know more. They know more more than us, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna start asking. Maybe one day, Google, like, you know, mm -hmm. where should I go this evening? Then they'll give us like really really logical answers, mm -hmm. or maybe Google will know who we prefer, like for mm -hmm. candidates or like parties of mm -hmm. of government, right? Like. Yeah, but, but the thing about a teacher is that a teacher cannot stop you from consulting other teachers. Uh, the, the whole idea about teachers, uh, instead of just uh, you know, parents raising their child by themselves, uh, is uh, that they're a panel uh, and they come from different um, life experiences. And indeed, in some of the areas where they specialize, they may know uh, your research interest better than yourself, but they're not your parents, so they don't necessarily know everything about you. Uh, so, and that's true even for kindergarten teachers. Um, and, and so the point I'm making is that there's uh, Google, uh, but there's also other algorithmic uh, yes. teachers, so yes. to speak. Yes. Uh, and uh, all of them, of course, can claim that they know in some areas you better than you do yourselves. Um, indeed, I know many cult leaders uh, would claim that, <laughs> gurus. <laughs> but, but, but at the end of the day, uh, you're, you're free to consult multiple ones. And if all of them sounds um, helpful, um, they don't uh, agree, actually. Uh, and then with the difference, that's when your individuation uh, starts to show. Uh, so uh, I think um, anyone uh, with good enough data can come up with interpretation that's uh, explanation of why you're doing something. That sounds very convincing. But at the end of the day, um, still you decide what you're going to do next. But if you build an addiction and that, you that's... consult only one guru, that's called a cult, uh, <laughs> to the exclusion uh, to every other uh, source of, of advice. Now that's a real danger. That's, that's so, 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 so what we should, should we be uh, scared about is actually this, uh, what we call a dark pattern right, of addiction. And exactly the same uh, reason why we're uh, afraid of exposing uh, children to hard drugs. Right? Because it's a kind of irrevocable 
uh, path. It, it builds a dependency. And uh, upon that dependency, the society will have to spend a lot of time uh, to detox uh, that dependency. So uh, I don't think algorithms that claim to know us better than uh, we do um, have anything uh, that's inherently more dangerous than a really wise teacher. Uh, but uh, it, a very wise teacher would not uh, use dark patterns uh, to build a helpless dependency uh, from the student to that teacher for life. And uh, um, some algorithms are trying to do that. So, so we should find the dark patterns, uh, but not necessarily uh, algorithms. Yeah. But is it necessarily wrong for like, for, like let, let's say like that, uh, we're talking about addiction, right? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, dependency. Manufacturer on, addiction, but yes. And, and, yeah, yeah. On, 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 on technology. The thing, yeah, on yeah. technology that we use. But like, uh, but that I think I think the, uh, the root of that is like is is caused by. Let's say the, the when when the product was first designed, right? It's yeah. meant to be addictive, so that you will, you yeah. you will use it twenty four seven. But yeah. like you can't you can't blame the company for doing that because Why? that's how they make money. Uh, okay, uh, say and that to the tobacco and liquor companies. <laughs> we we do blame them for that, you know. I because like it, it's it, it's their business and like it's uh -huh. their their only purpose of existing. They they just want to make money, make for a living, right? They have uh -huh. they they probably have thousands of employees. And they probably yeah, have, yeah, you know, have family, family to raise. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and so does the you know toxic food makers. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, um, the, the the fact that they're a business does not justify uh, negative uh, externalities. Now, sometimes it's purely economic. So, through uh, Pigovian tax or tax or whatever tax, uh, you can reclaim some of the externalities into a fund uh, to deploy in a way to kind of lessen the dependency. And sometimes, as in the case of hard drugs. Um, th there's no, as uh, far as I know, uh, no, I, no legislator in Taiwan say, oh, let's just tax them. They are also taxpayers. <laughs> 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 I, have a, I, have, I have a question uh -huh. from uh -huh. the teacher's uh -huh. point, standpoint. Uh -huh. So, you know, we're in the classroom mm -hmm. and students have phones. And mm -hmm. phones, in my opinion, will always be more interesting than us because they're mm -hmm. just unlimited amazing possibility screens right in front of students. I know. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, mm -hmm. technology in the classroom can be really cool. Computers, mm -hmm. you know, the accessibility of phones. Students these days know how to use phones so much better than they do know how to use laptops or iPads. I'm just curious sort of what your take is on phones in the classroom. Well, I, I don't see anyone checking their phones mm -hmm. uh, during our conversation. So obviously you are more interesting, <laughs> at least sometimes. <laughs> so like that's that's like proof. <laughs> and uh, you, you you would note that I do open my laptop uh, to search for terms that I'm not familiar with that you raised and so on. Uh, but after I do that, when uh, I speak to you and listen to you, I always kind of close the lid or at least fold uh, the lid as a kind of common courtesy. So uh, I do believe uh, it's the norm. Uh, that could be built uh, by the community of people uh, of showing each other respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that we do have phones with uh, doesn't mean that we, we should use it uh, mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, we, we only do that involuntarily when we become uh, users uh, that are addicted, uh, depend uh, like building the dependency in a way that uh, like makes us feel really uneasy uh, mm -hmm. when we're not checking uh, our phones. And uh, uh, one uh, shortcut I did was always internet with the phones um, through a stylus uh, or uh, through a keyboard. Uh, and I found that if my fingers are not touching the screen, uh, my brain does not mistake the screen for part of my body. Uh, so, so like I always remain intentional. Uh, when I interact uh, with, with the screen, because you first have to find the part of the screen you want the cursors to be, right? And, and so uh, they're them, and I may. <laughs> and so because of that, there's this kind of mental barrier. So it makes it very easy for me to put my phone down mm -hmm. at any time, or not bring my phones to, uh, to bedrooms or whatever, right? So, so uh, I think everyone can be more aware, uh, but you can't build awareness without some exposure to the actual tools. Right. So, so I think this is a, a kind of community exercise that everyone can do. Uh, in, in my classrooms, uh, I sometimes use Slido. Uh, and I purposefully ask people to scan the QR code and simply say that uh, your phone is very good because it's part of the classroom. But if you want to uh, post something, press like, or whatever things that you're already addicted on, uh, do that in public and contribute to the uh, school discussion. Uh, and so, uh, um, 
teachers with uh, the smartphone have students are always more interesting than just the smartphones. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they post on Instagram or Dcard or whatever, uh, they may have to wait for minutes before they get a real uh, interesting feedback, right? Uh, but if you're on the classroom, <coughs> you pose a really funny question, uh, the entire classroom laughs, uh, and that's an instant uh, feedback. So, um, yeah, don't sell ourselves short. Uh, with synchronous uh, communication, um, which is a classroom, we can always be more interesting and uh, just enlist uh, the help of the screens and uh, just interact with them in a productive way, I believe. Yeah, I think, I think that's interesting. I think one of the things that we, we go back and forth as a, students and community is sort of this idea of like technology and social media and the way that it's used mm -hmm. both in school and in the classroom setting and sort of often see teachers who are sort of like, mm -hmm. get, you know, I've been, this, I've, been, I've been on both sides of it of like, mm -hmm. get rid of the phone at the very beginning or mm -hmm. sort of like, let's really use them and integrate them. Uh, let's mm -hmm. do less screen time, more screen time. So just you know, yeah. I think, as I a, think the, the it also de depends on the comfort level of the uh, parent or teacher mm -hmm. uh, with the the screen uh, ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So if we're um, already addicted, uh, go went through the rehab <laughs> and uh, no longer a user in a drug sense, uh, and, and and then and then we'll be very comfortable. Uh, because we, we know exactly uh, its uh, charm and we know exactly how we ourselves uh, went out of this um, addiction. And, and so we, we can see that this is a symptom of the lack of meaningful connection uh, and not itself the cause of disruption uh, in classroom. Uh, but if the, the teacher uh, themselves is still in the addiction phase, uh, is uh, also a user, maybe a closet user, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and then, uh, of course, this public display of uh, drug using <laughs> classroom uh, will, will, will really scare uh, the, the teacher because the teacher is not yet out of the rehab uh, yet. So as I think we, we need to ourselves uh, build a uh, healthy relationship with screens first uh, and before we can. Yeah. Maybe one follow up to this and uh, Hogwarts. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Uh, questions. Yeah. It's just this idea of, you know, if you look at sort of tobacco addiction or alcohol addiction, mm -hmm. right, there are sort of uh, those are sort of known society addictions and there's ways to go to rehab mm -hmm. for that, there's ways to cure yourself, and I'm curious mm -hmm. sort of what your thoughts on, do you think technology addiction will get to that point in mm -hmm. society when people look at it as a, oh, he was addicted to his phone and therefore he went to rehab for six weeks and now he's fine? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Do you think uh, that's sort of coming Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's roughly at a, at a level of liquor use. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the uh, driving accident uh, rate is very similar. <laughs> so, so if you check your phones while you drive, it's you know as good or as bad as if you have drunk, right? <laughs> so, so, so there's uh, you know driving under technological influence. <laughs> it is it is it is a thing, uh, and in many jurisdictions, they're they're going uh, they're already equating uh, the two. Right, so, so I, I do think uh, that we're, uh, as a society, on a, because smartphones are really new. Uh, I mean, they're around for less than two decades. Uh, so it takes time uh, to, to build uh, the societal response. I mean, the US went through prohibition, right? So <laughs> this, this, this whole conversation takes time. But I think if it's just touch screen, uh, then we're probably already aware of most of the dark times. Uh, and the really bad ones uh, related to, you know, uh, getting the uh, underage uh, people to uh, overspend the credit card um, allowances on um, gambling or whatever, uh, that has already been uh, addressed. Uh, but, uh, or um, disclosure of intimate images against uh, the person's will and so on, that's criminal and is uh, being addressed. Uh, but outside of those, you know, very hard drug-like scenarios, I think generally speaking, we're on the kind of alcohol uh, level at this pretty, uh, much uh, the consensus around the most democracies, at least. Yeah. May I argue for the student for a bit? Sure, sure. Because, like, I, from my experience, like, I don't, I don't think, like, when, like, I don't think, a uh, student using their phone, uh, in, in the classroom is only caused by addiction. You know, mm -hmm. now, that could that could be a factor, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the only causation mm -hmm. that would exist yeah. in the class, classroom. Sure, sure. Because, like, uh, let's say, if a uh, if a student. Isn't isn't interested in the class isn't in the class content, then so like they go on their phone they they, they check out the internet, but and 
Like you, you can't you can't force them to put their phone down and then concentrate because like that, that that wouldn't work. Like that wouldn't just shove the things into their head, you know. Sure, sure, like, sure. They're just not interested. Yeah. So I, 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 I think yeah. I think like the, the interest of the student is very important uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to learning. Yeah, but but yeah. the thing is that it's it's uh, also viral because uh, a, a person checking their phone is going to affect uh, people sitting next to them. Uh, and, and that's the, the virality uh, that uh, really scares the teachers. If you check your phone on, on your eyeglass, uh, uh, I assure you, no teachers would care. <laughs> but, but when they become contagious uh, in a cl classroom, then, then that becomes a problem. Because when we talk about addiction, uh, it's about how hard it is to put something down. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it becomes a norm, like people sitting next to you are gossiping about the latest uh, trending hashtag on Instagram, right? <laughs> it became really hard uh, to, to uh, defend against this kind of peer pressure, even if you're previously not going to pick up your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's the, the social aspect uh, that we also need to address. But individually, if you can find some way to uh, check your phone when you're just tuning out uh, without impacting other students, I, I believe your teachers will be very interested <laughs> in that social innovation. <laughs> I, I think I would like I, I would argue back and forth like mm. you know uh, mm. from the from the teacher's standpoint of course mm. you would, you you want your student to achieve the most right so you you mm. wish for them to put their phone down and you know engage in the class development. For me, that I I, I don't mean to sort of make this an argument about us, yeah. but I I would disagree. I think the re I think sort of like like I'm just saying that the reason that I'm worried when a student picks up their phone is that one it just sends a message to everyone else that it's yeah. okay to pick up their phone. But th those ones that are truly interested, they would they would But it's it's not even that. It's if somebody was checking their Instagram, what to me is the most troubling is Candy Crush and mm -hmm. games like this where it's just so easy to get that dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. So easy to get that sort of this feels good, this is easy, I get to, I get to turn off my brain and coast to me it's mm -hmm. just infinite scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't blame a person because, like, once you do start, you just kind of go. Yeah. Mm. And it's a little bit disrespectful for the classroom for the teachers too. I think mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. like when you're teaching, you don't want to like see everybody not focused on what mm -hmm. you're teaching. Yeah. Another thing, for, like for me, that I find like the most um, risky about you know allowing cell phone use in the classroom is. Uh, there's often times like when you might think like you're disinterested or or what is being spoken about doesn't mm -hmm. apply to you or um, you know you, you, or maybe you think you're multitasking you're listening while also looking at your screen but then because your full focus is on, like you're not present and so something might happen or something might be said that you miss or maybe you're less likely to want to think about mm -hmm. what's being proposed or less likely to want to try something mm -hmm. you haven't tried before because you're more dismissive about it because you would rather be looking at your screen. Yeah. So for me, that, mm -hmm. that that's the kind of the biggest problem because then everything else you just kind of want to write off and, and not engage because mm -hmm. this is so engaging in front of you. Yeah, and, and because screens are kind of a, a kind of microaggression because you can't see anything on my screen. Right. Whereas uh, in a uh, pad, in a tablet, and e even if you kind of tilt it a little bit like this, it's still uh, inherently uh, communal. Right? You're, you're inviting people sitting next to you to, to see. It's like uh, taking notes on a notepad. Uh, you're, you're Kind of well, except in doing uh, you know examinations, but <laughs> in normal uh, normal classroom, uh, you're you're inviting other people to to look at uh, what, whatever you're doing uh, and maybe share them all that you just uh, taken with them, right? So so I think there is a distinction uh, between a kind of defensive use uh, where you can't really see what I'm doing uh, and a uh, pro-social use, uh, which is uh, you're you're free to to chat uh, with me about what whatever uh, on my tablet. Uh, by now, right? So uh, there, there is an argument of saying, you know, you, you can only use your phone like this, right? <laughs> right? Like totally open. <laughs> and and that's, that's one way of, of doing the peer pressure uh, against uh, addiction. Uh, or the other thing is just to uh, always interact uh, through a stylus on a tablet or a keyboard. Uh, like like uh, this, but only through a Bluetooth keyboard or something. Uh, in, in both ways, it turns it uh, into a more pro-social uh, gesture. Uh, and 
the, the Slido uh, interface is designed so that whatever uh, people see on their individual phones is also projected uh, in, in front of the classroom. And that's another way uh, of, of, of doing this. Right? I recently realized that. Ideas are coming in now. <laughs> I Just recently make realized it pro-social. that Slido is very good for like, you know, bringing attention towards, towards the presentation. Yeah, it, it's really good to control your teachers. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, but, but still, uh, you mean, you know, trolling uh, in public uh, is a way uh, to remind the teacher that they can do better uh, than this. But if you uh, simply, um, you know, start to scroll your phone uh, or play Candy Crush or whatever, uh, it's not only a microaggression, uh, but it's uh, being avoided because the teacher doesn't know what they're doing wrong mm -hmm. and has no way of finding out. Right? But if you troll, uh, posting a comment says, this is super interesting, <laughs> and it goes on the projector, uh, then the teacher knows how to adapt. I like the idea of just all students having their phones here yeah. in the middle of the table. Uh -huh. I'm just like, okay, you can do it there. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I think the idea of student student needs regulation for phones kind of originated from like, you know, teacher assuming that taking care of the student's future is their responsibility. Really? Because like, you know, they, they, they think that, all right, they, they need to engage into the class or like they, they need to bring the the class environment up in, the, in order in order to make this uh, student you know, achieve better in class no, in, in the future. I, 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 I don't know where you're supposed to be. I don't know. I don't think that's <laughs> the case. No, I think they're just doing their job. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's better than respect for, 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 yeah. for, for human beings, not, not just teachers, right? Yeah, like, I, I, I mean, if you say, I'm going to play Candy Crush uh, back home, I'm going to uh, you know drop from this class, uh, that's actually uh, still aggressive, but not avoidant. Because it's not uh, telling the classmates around you that Candy Crush is really funny, right? <laughs> At least you're keeping it to yourself. <laughs> right. so, so, so I think there's still a degree of you know teachers as uh, the participant uh, in a uh, norm around a classroom vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, teacher as a kind of dictator of the rules uh, in the classroom. And so far, all I've been hearing from the teachers is the norm level, not the rule level uh, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing about norms is that you, you can boycott uh, that very easily. <laughs> you, you just out-mean uh, that norm. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can invent your own way uh, as long as you share a common purpose. Mm -hmm. Whereas for, for the rules, uh, you know, there's only you know, a voice and exit. If you have no voice, you must exit, right? And, and that's much more clear-cut and much more imbalanced and the kind of uh, power imbalance that you just uh, kind of implied, right? But uh, all I've been hearing is the normal level conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to remind everyone it's 5.32. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't know how we got here. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, no, it was like, a, I thought it was a nice conversation. And like, you know, the prepared questions I found relevant to their project, but also just something that everyone was thinking about and it's really nice. Yeah, there's plenty to go around. May I have this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Email me sometimes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna check up on you. Uh, how you sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and I think before we leave, I think Helen wanted to take a group photo. Sure, sure, sure. Okay.